Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Drivers Hub and this is my new long-termer, the new generation KTM Duke 390. And let me tell you, this is at the absolute cutting edge of technology. Yo, I didn't even hear you come, that thing is so silent. I heard you say that the Duke 390 is at the cutting edge of technology, well, you clearly haven't seen the ultraviolet F77. So you are trying to tell me that this overpriced scooty that weighs over 200 kgs and is not available in all cities in India yet is better than the best entry-level sports bike of our country. Well, you clearly don't know about the F77. It's built by Ultraviolet, which is our homegrown brand. Uh, it is inspired by fighter jets. It looks like it's from the future. And yeah, it's a really cool piece of kit. I love your confidence, bro. Chal, we'll go on around and I'll just destroy you in every single aspect. Let's see, bro. Let's see. While both bikes don't really share common grounds in terms of competition, they both have one thing in common. They are packed to the brim with tech wizardry. The Duke 390 hosts a suite of rider safety features like dual channel switchable ABS, cornering ABS, switchable traction control, a bi-directional quick shifter and even launch control. The F77 on the other hand has most of its pioneering tech in its powertrain. Its proprietary battery tech is unlike anything our country has ever seen. A 10 kilowatt hour battery that pumps out 30.2 kilowatts of peak output and a whole 100 newton meters of torque to the rear wheel at 0 rpm. And this specific recon variant has a ridiculous range of over 300 kilometers, putting a lot of ICE engine's tank capacity to shame. The one area where the F77 trumps the Duke 390 has to be in the looks department. I mean, just look at this thing. It looks like a spaceship, quite literally. And the thing is, uh, the F77 takes a lot of inspiration from fighter jets. Uh, Narayan, who is the CEO of Ultraviolet, he's a big fan of fighter planes and all, and you can clearly see it in the design language of this thing. I mean, for example, just look at the Duke's uh, front struts and look at the F77's front struts. I mean, it looks so different and even though this is just a cover on top, it just makes a big difference in how this bike looks. The other thing that the F77 has to take care of is aerodynamics because in EVs, it's all about uh, the range that you get. So the more efficient you are in the air, the more uh, range you will have. So as you can see, all of the surfaces are smooth and curved and you know, uh, just like fighter jets, if something is not necessary in the design, just remove it. And that's exactly what they've done. That's why it has this cover over here. It's so smooth down the side. And you get three different color options. You get airstrike, shadow and laser. This is the laser uh, color variant. And I think so it looks really, really nice. It looks like a liquid metal red. Coming to the Duke, I really like the way the Duke looks as well. This new updated Gen 3 Duke 390 is a very aggressive looking bike. But compared to the F77, well, I don't think it's a match for it at all. Well, that's your opinion and understandable to each its own. Uh, I personally prefer the Duke. If that looks like a spaceship, this looks like an alien UFO. With the massive headlight for its eyes, the side panels looking like massive teeth and the entire exposed trellis frame giving it like a bionic look and a bionic style. And it is much more interesting to look at, in my opinion. While the ultraviolet F77 looks a bit more like a machine that is made by humans, more like an appliance, in my opinion. But again, that is personal preference. And one thing that you cannot disagree about is that the Duke 390 is featherweight at 168 kgs compared to the behemoth that that 204 kg ultraviolet F77 is. Well, it is true that the F77 is the heavier bike, but one thing that it does really well is hide its weight. Uh, the only place where you can probably feel the weight is when you're under heavy braking. But apart from that, when you're going through corners, doing transition through corners, it feels very stable and very nimble on its feet. And the other thing is that uh, Ultraviolet has taken the Duke as the benchmark while uh, basically manufacturing and testing this bike. So there are a lot of differences, even in the design language. I mean, you have this singular headlight up front. Both of them look 
fairly similar in some areas but i mean yeah it's a pretty different way of making bikes for both manufacturers so what do you think should uh, anything happen to the ultraviolet f77 in terms of braking what would be better for the bike uh, so i think so the main problem for it is that uh, when you're under heavy braking it doesn't really have any feel in the front so probably that's the only place uh, where you can uh, do some improvements it still has still steel braided rinds if i'm not wrong yes. but the feel is just not there and i mean you can't really do too much about it it's just the way the bike has been made uh, it's a very front heavy bike all of the mass is over here in the front so it is going to be feeling very heavy when you're under heavy braking so totally fine if you're an experienced rider though in that sense which I'm the not. duke 390 in that sense the duke 390 is fantastic under braking dropping anchor is very confidence inspiring especially from the front lever and it's very progressive even uh, when you set up the front suspension the nose dive can be absolutely deleted which makes it very very nice to stomp on the brake coming on towards the rear the rear brake is lacking a little bit of feel but you do not use that uh, most of the time while riding the bike since the front is so progressive in that sense i feel like the duke 390 is a much nicer bike to ride daily but that does give quite an occasion vibe well i wouldn't say it's a better bike to ride daily because of the vibrations of the single cylinder i mean anywhere close to 7000 rpm and you start to like rattle yourself into pieces but i have to say uh, with the gen 3 duke they've really improved the daily rideability and i have to give props to them on the brakes for example the front brake i mean it's like a piece of art i mean <laughs> it's a very different looking front brake design and they've saved a lot of weight uh, with just the brakes themselves uh, but yeah i mean for a daily rider i would still pick the f77 it's much quieter very composed and just the better daily bike in my opinion I just think that that scooty would look really nice on my rear view mirror. Well, at least it's a nice looking scooty. The Duke 390 feels at home on a spirited ride and there is no denying that KTM is the goat on track in its specific segment. But through the generations KTMs have been getting softer, tamer and all in all more approachable to less hardcore riders, which can be a bother to some, but an amateur rider like me can benefit from this newfound tameness. The new Duke is more sure-footed and forgiving, making it a delight to ride angry. The bike feels effortless in between left right transitions thanks to its revised chassis and the new seats provide fantastic leverage while tipping it hard too. Braking duties are handled by Bybray brakes that provide fantastic bite and even the ABS modes are set up in such a way that it isn't intrusive in any mode. The cornering ABS and traction control module also provides a great cushion of support while riding the bike to its limits. Correcting your throttle and brake inputs perfectly to make you feel like you're a riding god. What is a letdown is the choice of tires on offer. The option of Michelin's we saw on the bikes on sale abroad and when this bike was being tested are sadly not what you get in India. You get Metzelers from factory which kind of run out of performance before the bike. That is a slight bummer but nothing stopping you from buying better rubber if your skills supersede the potential of these tires. On the other hand, this Recon model has a powerful 38.9 HP and 95 Nm of torque to help offset the extra weight. And the company claims a 0 to 100 kph time of 8 seconds with a top speed of just under 150 kph. That puts the performance in the 250 to 300 cc zone, but in reality it feels different to any other petrol vehicle. That's because it's a wonderful torque dominated linear surge of acceleration that goes on nicely till over 120 kph after that things began to taper off the only thing that feels weird is that there's nothing for your left limbs to do but the human brain is an exceptionally adaptable thing and you'll soon get used to that no matter which mode you choose the feel and connection from the accelerator is very natural and there isn't much of a learning curve if this is your first ev after years of riding petrol motorcycles 
In fact, what took me the most amount of time to get used to was that with all of that talk, there was almost always a little more acceleration than I expected on corner exits and that definitely ups the excitement factor. The sound also is quite interesting. And the F77 produces a futuristic blend of electric motor and primary reduction wine. Unlike most EVs in the market, the F77 gets dual channel ABS as standard. In terms of handling, the F77 is not as agile as the Duke 390, but nonetheless, it's a pretty fun bike. So, both bikes are fun, agreed. Agreed. But we still need to settle the battle of technology. Which one is the geekier bike? I propose top trumps. Let's go. 5 inch TFT screen. Same, but I have cooler animations for sure. Okay, agreed on that. Um, I've got riding modes. I have three different riding modes, glide, combat and ballistic. Same, I've got track, street and rain. Cool. Then ABS, switchable ABS. I have switchable ABS as well. Traction control. I do not have traction control, but I do have different settings for my regen braking. Mm, which is fancy. pretty cool. Yes, that's cool. That is cool. I have Bluetooth connectivity. I have Bluetooth connectivity as well. Ooh. I have launch control. I do not need launch control because I have a hundred Newton meters of torque at zero RPM. Ooh, fancy. Don't think it's enough though. Uh, I have a quick shifter. I don't need a quick shifter. I have coolant temperature control. I don't have that either. I have adjustable suspension at the front. I've also got adjustable suspension at the front. Okay. I have these really nice looking controls over here. I ha also have the same kind of controls just in a different design. Okay. I have an internal combustion engine. I have the government on my side. Damn. <laughs> so there you go guys. There is still no replacement for IC powered ponies yet but you have to give it to the ultraviolet F77 for showing us a proper glimpse of what the future of EVs is going to look like. With its amazing looks and really impressive powertrain specs, it sure is the right step towards transitioning from an IC to an EV. But when it comes to keeping up with entry-level performance bikes like the Duke 390, it's still got a long way to go. Yep, I think so. It's very difficult for a company like Ultraviolet, which is fairly new, to probably match the performance of something like the 390. It's been a staple in the Indian market for the last 10-12 years and I think so with this new Gen 3 bike, yeah, it's a completely different monster. I think nothing in the segment of its own also can compete with it. G310R, that new RTR310, nothing comes close in terms of tech, how it looks, power and the F77 on the other hand, well, we have to give it credit because First of all, it's built by an Indian manufacturer based in Bangalore. And this in it of itself as a first product from Ultraviolet is very impressive. We've seen a couple of other manufacturers in the Indian space try to make EVs, but we know how, what sort of motorcycles that they make. And this is a truly genuine premium feeling motorcycle. I mean, there's nothing in the Indian landscape that can match the build quality, the tech and everything that Ultraviolet have done. They've put a lot of thought into this bike and you can clearly see it. Exactly. So yes, when it comes to standing out in a crowd and having something that is futuristic under your bum, definitely consider the Ultraviolet F77 if price allows that is. But if you're an old school kind of person and what you want is uncompromised performance for the price that you pay, then the Duke 390 is the way to go and yes, I can confidently say that the new generation of Duke 390 is back at being at the top of the entry-level performance game. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do check us out on Instagram. Give us a follow over there. Subscribe to our channel for more such uh, two-wheeler content and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.